Great question. So her question is, what are concrete things that congregations could do, this congregation could do, to actually respond to this issue of uh, incarceration besides just hearing uh, me or others talk about it? Uh, and I, I love your suggestions already. Uh, we do encourage a number of our congregations to uh, start a reading club and read mass, uh, The New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander, the mass incarceration uh, a text that is in many ways a wonderful introduction, and then begin having conversations in our congregations about how can we as a faith institution, as I said in my sermon, Howard Thurman says that God stands squarely on the side of those who find their backs against the wall. So how do we as faith institutions leverage our institutional power and influence to actively stand with those families and individuals who find themselves um, in these systems of incarceration? Um, that could be um, not just writing letters to those who are incarcerated, but how do we actually create a systemic response? Appreciate that most of these uh, institutional uh, decisions that are made uh, at the uh, state and federal level are most impacted when institutions of power uh, like churches or, or uh, advocacy organizations or financial institutions actually leverage their influence and power to change laws, right, to change some of these policies. So part of what we do is we actually help organize congregations to move beyond just the kind of knowing the information vis-a-vis -vis reading it in a book to actively identifying policies in our county and our state that fuel mass incarceration, helping us to put uh, issues on the, the, uh, the ballot that actually help to uh, uh, repair some of these broken uh, uh, laws and systems and policies. Um, and again, I'll use some examples in in uh, California, we were able to pass a state bill that uh, took the check the box, you know, every time someone is convicted of a crime, um, they have to check a box on most job applications. Uh, so we were able to remove that off of um, job applications. So returning citizens, formerly incarcerated folks, can at least compete for a job, right? And we, we did that. Uh, with a lot of folks on the, from the business community, Chamber of Commerce, like fighting us and saying that, you know, that will, you know, uh, put our businesses at risk, et cetera. So, again, part of some of this is really about, you know, having a, a very clear kind of theology and idea and understanding about, as people of faith and followers of Jesus, what does it mean for us to identify uh, these principles and actually live them out and make them real in the public square. Uh, I'd love for you all to read uh, Micah chapter 5 where it talks about, uh, you know, walking justly and, and loving justice and righteousness. These, I think, are texts that we all should really, uh, you know, kind of ruminate and sit on. I think it, it may give us some more in inspiration for that. So book clubs, you know, uh, finding out what are some policies that we can uh, begin to impact. You will be amazed about how calling your elected official at the state and the federal level around some of these issues regularly will actually make a profound impact. Um, most folks do not hear, the elected officials tell us that they do not hear very frequently from their constituencies on these issues. Um, but they hear a lot from lobbyists of the prison companies or uh, the, the other kinds of institutions that really uh, benefit from this, so wouldn't it be amazing if our congregations engaged in a, um, you know, a telephone campaign, calling your elected official and telling them that these are concrete ways that we can respond in our own state, in our own county, in our own community to address uh, lots of these different kinds of issues. All of these very concrete things make a very uh, profound uh, difference and impact.